So Joe Biden's big international trip has been one disaster after the next, one great big embarrassment, just like when he travels here at home in America, whether it's walking across the lawn or up and down Air Force One's ramp. Problems, 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 problems. Let's go to the uh, Palestinian Authority. I have a feeling they did this on purpose. I usually stand, we all stand for the national anthem. They were playing with us. Listen to what the official band did. Stop, stop, stop. <laughs> it's like the little rascals were playing that song. Can I see that band again, please? They got pretty nice uniforms. I mean, they really should have their act together here. Uh, I think they may have screwed this up on purpose. I actually do. It might have been some diss. Anyway, if I were Joe Biden, I would have had a word with the band leader or the president or somebody. But I don't think he even noticed. He's that tone deaf. We know that, don't we? All right, next it was off to Saudi Arabia. You know about this guy, Mohammed bin Salam? He's the crown prince, and uh, he's a crafty guy, probably a bad dude. Looks like he had that guy Khashoggi killed a few years ago, the Washington Post journalist. Yeah, he had him uh, dismembered. Now, that seems to have been on Khashoggi's orders. So during the campaign, everybody was competing to be the toughest on MBS. Take a look. President Trump has not punished senior Saudi leaders. <clears throat> would you? Yes, I would make it very clear. We were not going to, in fact, sell more weapons to them. We were going to, in fact, make them pay the price and make them, in fact, the pariah that they are. There's very little social redeeming value of the, in the present uh, government in Saudi Arabia. Make them a pariah. That would seem to uh, entail maybe not hanging out with them, not giving them a fist bump. Joe Biden shows up there in Saudi Arabia and take a look when they say hello. Fist bump time. Yeah, there he is. The crown prince, the one who ordered that journalist killed. Now a fist bump, a fist bump. That's that's even chummier than a handshake. It really is. That's like, yo, we're bros. You know who uh, first introduced it to America really in a big way? The Obamas. Barack and Michelle, this was so cute, wasn't it? And this was like a signature greeting in the Obama White House. Actually, look at this. This showed us that Joe was really considered cool by Barack Obama. Not really. You know who had a really sophisticated and realistic view and understanding of the world? Our guy. You got a lot of killers. Why, you think our country's so innocent? You think our country's so innocent? I don't know of any government leaders that are killers in America. Well, take a look at what we've done, too. We've made a lot of mistakes. Very realistic and sobering. Um, so when he did not come out right away and clobber Saudi Arabia when this guy Khashoggi was killed a couple of years ago, everyone went nuts because it's Trump. Trump refused to criticize Saudi Arabia over Khashoggi's disappearance and probable murder. What that points to is this shameful uh, mishandling of our relationship with Saudi Arabia by the Trump administration. I think it is outrageous that President Trump continues to defend Saudi Arabia. This was a murder of a journalist inside a Saudi embassy by a hit team sent from Saudi Arabia. Wow, wow, really bad stuff. And when Joe Biden shows up to see the guy who sent the hit team, it's a fist bump. You see, everything that Trump did was bad. Everything that Joe does... The media tries to, well, cover for him. Every now and then they call him out. His reaction is always weird. You're coming under a lot of fire for your fist bump with the crown prince. Why? <laughs> I just wanted to give you a chance to respond to that. But also, how can you be sure that another incident, another murder like Jamal Khashoggi won't happen again? God love you. What a silly question. How could I possibly be sure of any of that? I just made it clear, if anything occurs like that again, they'll get that response and much more. What response is that? A, a, a double fist bump? 
Uh, he's all over the place and laughing. It's a legitimate question. The fist bump was very, very friendly, like they're bros. All right. Then he gets impatient. Then he starts throwing his, uh, he turns the volume up. I am president of the United States of America. For the United States president remains silent on a clear violation of human rights. It's totally inconsistent with who we are, what we are, and what we would do, what we believe. And so I'm not going to remain silent. I don't know why you're all so surprised the way I react. No one's ever wondered I mean what I say. The question is I sometimes say all that I mean. Yeah, people are always actually confused by what you say. What are you talking about? And I'm no diplomat, but fist bumping a guy like uh, MBS is very, very confusing to the world. What the hell do we stand for if you're being so friendly with this guy? Here's the key. Joe Biden doesn't know what he's doing. He is an empty suit. You know that term? I love it. It applies to nine out of 10 politicians, especially Joe Biden. I'll get back to him. An empty suit, by definition, is a prominent person regarded as lacking substance or ability. Sounds like so many people we know. Let's start with Pete Buttigieg, empty suit number one. Okay, a couple things about Mayor Pete. He has that job as Secretary of Transportation, again, for one reason. He is gay. Nobody cares. Nobody gives a damn. But the political press, boy, oh boy, oh boy, when he was running for president, normally they would laugh at the mayor of South Bend, Indiana, running for president. But he had a secret weapon. His sexuality, again, is his business. But the political press feasted on it. Okay, you're gay. What else? Nothing. He is in way over his head. There's some Republican empty suits, too. Kevin McCarthy. Kevin McCarthy, definitely an empty suit. I think he's there just for the game of politics. And remember, at the moment of truth, he, um, he panicked. He panicked after January 6th and actually said that Donald Trump should resign. Now, this is one personal fear I have. Um, I do not want to get into any conversations about Pence pardoning anything like that. I mean, the only discussion I would have with him is that I think this will pass, and it would be my recommendation we should resign. Resign to the president. The president should resign. This guy should not be speaker. All right, we'll see what happens. Uh, president Obama. Oh, yes, an empty suit extraordinaire. Remember, he wrote that crummy book, spent two minutes in the Senate, and then runs for president. He got away with a lot because he's black, and for whatever reason, people were impressed by him. I don't get it. And when he got in there, he was playing the race card all the time. You know, if I had a son, he'd look like Trayvon. Thanks a lot. What an unhealthy, unhelpful message. So divisive, did nothing for America, did a lot for himself and his family. He is now said to be a billionaire, a billionaire. Here's an up and coming empty suit. His name is Eric Swalwell. Lots of things about this guy we don't like, but I think this was the ultimate in hubris and uh, shallowness. Thinking that he had the stature to run for president when he was like 37 years old, taking that debate stage saying, I should be the next president of the United States. He did that. He ran for president, and uh, yeah, there's nothing there. Nothing there. Uh, all right, next on our list. Ooh, Beto, Beto O'Rourke. Yes, empty suit, nothing, nothing in there. You know this guy. Hell yes, we're gonna take your AR-15, your AK-47. We're not gonna allow it to be used against our fellow Americans anymore. The good news is it looks like he's going to lose that race for Texas governor. Then he'll have lost three races in a row. And then I think it's bye-bye forever, Beto. Okay, next on our list. Ooh, Michelle Obama, very much like her husband, didn't do much but get lucky break after lucky break. She thinks she's all that, gets $60 million for a silly book and a movie. This is how bad she is. You're about to see an actual scene from a documentary. She produced it herself. She authorized this. This is a scene from a movie that she got 
$30 million for it. $30 million for the movie. Take a look at how bad this is. Oh, I thought you were wearing the pink, John. No, that was for That's earlier, like and then that had food on it. That's the That was for the, the day. That looks like two belts. It's one belt, but it's three separate. Oh, it's got a top belt, too. Oh, I see, I see. But it's not separated? No, it's one belt, but you buckle it three different times. And is that the style? And it goes on like this. <laughs> two, two hours of her trying on clothes. And she's a multi-million dollar filmmaker now. Uh, next on our list, Eric Adams. Mayor Eric Adams. This guy knows nothing. It shows every single day. Some people were fooled by the act. He's a former cop and uh, a hero. Just ask him. For 22 years, I wore a bulletproof vest and stood on the street corners and protected children and families in the city of New York. He protected children and families. What about single people, by the way? What about elderly single people? What about the homeless? There's nothing up here, and I don't think there's anything in his heart. He has no integrity, no ability. He's a liar and a racist, but he does look good in a suit. That's his uh, forte. Next on our list, John Kerry. A man of my position should not be held accountable for what he says. I fight climate change all over the world in gas guzzling, Private jets. Yes, he has an addiction for flying private. And if you call him on it, you see just how arrogant he really is. I understand that you came here with a private jet. Uh, is that the, an environmental way to travel? If you offset your carbon, it's the only choice for somebody like me who is traveling the world to win this battle. The time it takes me to get somewhere, I can't sail across the ocean, I have to fly to meet with people and get things done. But what I'm doing, almost full time, is working to win the battle of climate change. Yes, John Kerry, he has a reputation of a guy who gets things done, doesn't he? No, no, not at all. Next, uh, getting down to the uh, wire here, we've got Gavin Newsom. He's going to be around, uh, unfortunately, for a long time. This could be the Democrat nominee in 2024. He's shallow enough. He's vain enough. He's leftist enough. He's got it all going on for that party and totally bereft of accomplishments, but plenty of hubris. I urge all of you living in Florida to join the fight or join us in California, where we still believe in freedom, freedom of speech, freedom to choose, freedom from hate, and the freedom to love. Don't let them take your freedom. Nervous this guy, huh? Have you seen California lately? We know what's going on there, and we know what's going on in Florida. I fell for the trap, though. He doesn't really think people are going to move to California. He just wants people talking about him. We might as well, because he is going to emerge as a major player in 2024. The vetting begins now. Next week, we'll talk all about his dating life back when he was mayor of San Francisco. All right, finally... Joe Biden. Okay. Empty suit. Synonymous with the term empty suit. Absolutely. And he knows it, actually. Uh, why else would he lie all the time about his credentials, about, well, everything? What law school did you attend and where did you place in that class? And the other question oh, is, yes. could you quickly, I think we I think, we I, I, think I probably right. have a much higher IQ than you do, I suspect. I went to law school on a full academic scholarship, the only one in my, in my class uh, to have a full academic scholarship. In the first year in law school, I decided I didn't want to be in law school and ended up in the bottom two-thirds of my class and then decided I wanted to stay, went back to law school, and in fact ended up in the top half of my class. I won the international moot court competition. I was the outstanding student in the political science department at the end of my year. I graduated with three degrees from undergraduate school and 165 credits, only need 123 credits, and I'd be delighted to sit down and compare my IQ to yours if you'd Senator, like, Frank. Everything he just said, everything he just said is not true. And take a look at that face, will you? Smug, full of himself. He has lied and he is happy. Empty suit and maybe a little bit psychopathic as well. Um, ben Franklin, the late, great Ben Franklin, he said something so, well, he said a lot of things that are great, but this is really great. Well done is better than well said. 
There isn't a politician, hardly any politicians in America who can relate to this. There is one man, however, who definitely can, our guy, Donald Trump. You know, let's face it, when it comes to talking, he's not necessarily the most polished guy in the world, um, but he is effective. He's effective, and he can get stuff done. He's been doing it all of his life. Uh, we told you about Trump Tower last night. Nobody talks about this. A major hotel on 42nd Street here in Manhattan. It was a dilapidated, crummy place. He renovated it, a massive renovation when he was just 28 years old. It was a miracle that he could pull this thing off. People who get it done, not just say stuff. That's why we like Trump, right? Okay. Stay with us. Ooh, these aren't empty suits. They're empty skirts. Uh, let's see. Sam Britton and Rachel Levine. They're both senior administration officials. They're both, well, they were originally men. Now they're who knows what. Stay with us.